just got the swarm call. We've just got the swarm call. Can I hold it and vlog you? Yeah. Dance! So, car keys. We'll get the scare. Got the swarm collector. We'll head to the allotment. We'll pick up another nucleus just in case they're too big for this. Um, we'll catch a swarm. Come with me. You'll see it. Woo! Goodbye! Goodbye! More and more abstracted, doesn't it? So yeah, swarms. We are just leaving my allotment. My friend Suze, who actually designed the logo for Pierre Buzzin and that honeybee hole in the flag. And the whole point behind that to get the message across. Now we're a community interest company and we're not a honey farm. I say it all the time. As such, I do sell some honey. Uh, but that's not the purpose of what I'm doing. I'm bringing people together through beekeeping for the craft of beekeeping, um, which I love. Suze, who designed the logo for Pierre Buzzin, <laughs> I was in the shops getting my tea get some ingredients for tea. She texted us saying, Doggy, I've sat down in my garden uh, with the headphones in, with a book, with a dog in the back. She called the dog a okay, really cool dog. Um, and she says, basically, I've sat down, been there for about 10, 15 minutes, look to me right. And then I saw this clump of bees and there was a swarm there. She just asked if I could go and pick it up. Yeah, and what a shock. Imagine if she sat down in the wrong seat and she decided to sit down on the place like, because these bees, you'll see them, they're like sat underneath the deck chair. And if she sat down there, she would have got such a fright. <laughs> Basics of swarm, right? <clears throat> In a honeybee colony, there's the queen, one queen's laying eggs. She can lay up to like 2,000 eggs a day. It's incredible. She's a, um, a laying machine. And there's other reasons why, right? But the mo two most important ones are if the queen runs out of space to lay, and if the workers have run out of space to store the nectar to produce honey. And if you think about a managed beehive, there's only so much space. Um, so a beekeeper's job, most of the time, is just trying to um, stop the swarm, swarm control. An integrated swarm management plan is needed. And um, that's often giving the bees more space, whether that's for the queen to lay or for them to store honey. So yeah, sometimes swarms can be dead easy to pick up. And they are like, like I'm expecting this one to be, just clumped on the bottom of something, on the edge of something. And you just drop them into a box. Yeah, dead easy as you'll see. But there's been other times I've went to get a swarm and it's been like entangled inside of a bush. Um, like a really prickly hawthorn bush and they're just a right nightmare to get to. Um, yeah, and then a swarm of course becomes not a swarm anymore. Once they maybe take up residence somewhere, they might go inside of a chimney, inside of a wall cavity, and start laying down comb, and the queen start like laying a brood. Um, and that's when it isn't a swarm anymore, it's a colony. There's a video that I've got on YouTube, and you can check it out, when I cut out a colony, is what we call it, cut out an extraction of a colony, where bees had swarmed nearby, and then took up residence in a chimney block, a chimney stack, on a, um, a list of building, an old vicarage in Eglinton. It's a cracking video. Um, full day out, really sticky, warm, hot day. Right, what's that Google? Turn left here. But you can check that out on my YouTube channel and also on my website. There's a little blog about it. If you don't want to watch, you need to maybe have us a little read about it. But yeah, sometimes swarms are dead easy to forget, sometimes they're not. Google which right am I taking? I don't think it's a back and forth conversation, really. I'll turn these off so you don't know where she lives. Look who's here. We're at Suze's house. We're going to get suited up. And this is Suze's dog, Magoo. <laughs> we haven't sold her for ages, have we, Magoo? Such a nice pupper. And this is Suze. Hey! We've got a spare suit for Suze. Suze will get suited up. Um, and then we'll go into that swarm and get it all boxed up. So Suze was sitting, was it that one? Third one. Third one along. Sat on the seat as you do. And then looks to your right. Sees this, imagine. Sees this little swarm. So all these bees have left a hive from nearby. And they're looking for a new home. Look at them. Clustered so tight. I bet they're wishing they waited for a less windy day. It's pretty windy. 
I've got my queen cage, just in case I see the queen, we can um, pop her in a little cage. Otherwise, I'm just going to drop them into a nuke. And I've got my skep, but I think these are wanting to be in a nuke. Beautiful. I'd say and back off. That's fair enough. I'm not getting too close. Well, I'm going to get too close. I'm about to like really disrupt what he's getting up to. It's a decent size. So it's possibly a prime swarm, which means it's got a mated queen ready to lay eggs. A cast swarm would be a lot smaller. Meh. Stuff. As soon as the queen goes in, we'll see them like banning at the entrance. So what I'm going to do... Let's pick it up and knock them in. Hover them over the box. And one, two. Straight inks, it's cold. <laughs> We're gonna be pure knackered. So you see them in there, it's meshing about. Mm -hmm. Still a couple of stragglers in good doggy fashion. I forgot my smoker. Now I would usually smoke them so the pheromone's gone. But I was going to pick them up and put them in. In there. And you get these. See, Susan's doing a good one and doing no more mere. So the grass is nice and long. So when I move this box, I have to make sure the queen's not there. I'll shut these up for now. So what I'll do is I'll keep these locked in. Well, obviously the entrance will be open for them to come and go. But I'll keep them closed in, give them some better foundation. They should have loads of nectar when they left their hive. They should have like gorged themselves on nectar um, before they left. So I'll wait for them to start drawing out some comb. Yeah, just wait and see when they draw out the comb to see whether there is a laying queen in there. Hopefully there's a lane queen, and then everything's just got to go. And this let's keep that feeder off and out. So what I'm hoping to see now is bees to start fanning at the entrance, and that'll indicate that the queen's in there, and they'll spread like a pheromone, a chemical message. You see our look, this is your home now. But I will sift through these bees in the grass just to make sure the queen isn't there closer to where they need to be. It's usually where I get stung. But you know, you see I've taken two stings. One's there and one's there. One bees. They're all clambering in, which is a good sign. How are bees? You got a new home? And I'll move this chair as well, just so then the car will go back to the place that the can last smell the queen. And then put this right where that was. And all those stragglers should make the way inside. They should smell it. Make sure the box of doesn't know when I'm halfway down the road. <laughs> it's
there. So you see them at the entrance there, sticking the bombs in the air. And they're spreading the, the pheromones of the colony, saying, look, this is where we are now, the Queen's Society, yeah? come on in. Guiding everybody in. So if I just find all the little stragglers and put them near the entrance, they'll soon get themselves inside. Especially with it being so cold and windy. They won't want to be flying. If you pick them up like mid-day, you'd have to do this and then come back as the sun's coming down when all the other flying bees have returned. Otherwise it can end up with like a couple of hundred bees coming back to the same place. But I'm pretty confident that most of them should be around here now. Go there in your new hive. You're coming to Meadowell. You, you can get in. You, you can get in. How many hives have you got now? Around 23. Well, that's pretty impressive. 24. There you go. <laughs> With this, yeah. Some newbies. Just down the line. So it's easy for them all to get in. Yeah, so now it's just a waiting game. Five, ten minutes to pull themselves together and get inside. So all the bees are tucked up now. They'll all be clustered inside there. Which is good. No stragglers. Just slide that along. That's them sealed in. We'll get them down to the apiary in Meadowell um, and get them settled in and then next week we'll open them up and see how they're doing. Yeah, so we have a box of bees in the booth. Um, we'll leave the gates head now and head back to Meadowell. They're going to go in the community apiary in Meadowell. Um, I've got a space in there. We'll see the journey but basically I'm going to leave them um, in the nucleus box for a day or so. Let them use any of the nectar that they've held because before the swarm they'll like get loads of nectar stores just ready to set up a new home. So I'll let them use that and build up the comb. And then give, get in there, see if the queen's laying, see if it's a viable queen. It was a fair sized swarm, it wasn't massive. But there might be a lane queen in there, it's a time of year for um, prime swarms. And then if they need it, I might give them a little bit of sugar syrup to help them draw out the foundation. Hopefully then, they'll get into a um, nice full size colony. We'll see how it goes. Like last year and the year before and the year before, I did a lot of swarm chasing. Um, every time I heard there was a swarm, I was running after it. Sometimes you get there and the swarms had left or it would be like an unmated queen. That might not come back mated, and then you're using all your spare kit for swarms. Whereas now I've got the kit to like use and manage my hives, uh, so I'm not running out as much, which is a bit more handy. You never know what you're going to get with a swarm, they might be riddled with varroa and have other sorts of diseases that you're then bringing into your apiary. And really, I should be taking any new swarms to the farm, which I kind of use in the isolation apiary, uh, but it's getting quite late. I don't want to go down to the farm track like 10 at night and disturb them. Um, even though I'm sure they'll be cool with it, but you know. And my girlfriend, Hayley, will not be happy if I get home with a box of bees. Uh, <laughs> I've done it before and I said it wouldn't happen again. So I'm not going to let it happen again. So I get them out of well. And we'll put them in the community every. And then we're going to check them out in a few days and see how they're doing. And as with most swarms that I get, the first jar of honey or so that comes from them, that's Jesus. Um, a little thank you for passing on some bees for us. Yeah. So the drone base is on. Woo! We'll get ourselves to the Meadowell. To the community every. <laughs> With a couple of thousand bees in the boot of the car. <laughs> Woo! So here we are at Meadowell Connectors and the community centre of the Box of Bees. Just going past the pond. It's a luscious little wildlife pond, we filmed that last year. If you don't know much about Meadowell, um, stick with me because you'll learn a lot more about them. 
they've been incredible. They're like letting us set up some hives here, just when it started as a hobby. Um, and then now, of course, we've established a beekeeping company, community interest company, um, all on the grounds in Bedwell. They've been so supportive and really instrumental in getting me going. And it's a really, really awesome community centre. They do loads of growing together and just bringing people together in meaningful ways, which is um, it's what life's about. It's really what I enjoy most about life, I suppose. Um, stick around, there's loads more to come from Meadowell. I do loads of videos here, I do a bit of gardening here, bushcraft courses and that. And with a uh, new blogging camera, you can come along that journey with us. So up the track we go to the community apiary. And for those that have seen my videos before, I know it's already getting very full in here. There's a lot of hives. And here's another colony to join them. I don't know how much you'll be able to see um, with the light. Let's pop these bees down here for now. And I'll get the code. I can put you guys. Probably can't see much. Pretty dark. Combination. So I've got an empty nuke over here. And they can go in this little nuke stand. I'll just double check it's empty. Convinced it is. Any new friends? the lights escaping it's night time now like fully night time um, but that's them you can just about see the box on its new nice it's nice new stand get some of this creeping buttock about the way make sure I'm not gonna put any nettles <laughs> and sting myself and then so they can be they can come out in the morning was open a little wee hole they're all tucked up from the long car journey yes yeah, so that's them in the apron it's nice to come here in the evening everything feels so different but not all these hives that you see have bees in them some of them are just um spare bits of kit i'll just keep close by 